Cash to 5K is a challenge and it's one that we've covered in videos in the past, but I actually wanted to find someone who we could take through it step by step to share it with you guys. So I needed a guinea pig, one who's happy to share their journey over the next eight weeks. I'm delighted to say that I have found a wonderful volunteer, Pippa. Now I need to go and let her know exactly what she's let herself in for. Before Pippa arrives, I should probably give you a little bit of background. So Pippa's part of our team. She works as a producer and is basically an all round amazing problem solver. As for Pippa's running background, I'm going to let her share you in on that one. But one more thing, you're very lucky because you are going to get to meet Wilma. Yes, Pippa has a puppy called Wilma. She's just awesome. Hey Pippa, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good, how are you? I'm good, are you um, looking forward to this? I mean, we are going to get you running 5k in under 30 minutes in just eight weeks. I mean, I'm very nervous and I'm going to make a complete fool of myself in, on the internet, um, but if you manage to get me to run 5k under 30 minutes, I'll be super chuffed because that has never happened ever. Oh, we will do and we'll, we might even get Wilma, <laughs> Wilma running that as well. Um, now, I know you're not a, a true couch potato, but where are you at with your running at the moment? Well, I mean, I've definitely been a couch potato since coronavirus hit the UK and we've been in lockdown. So that's basically the past three months, four months. Um, and I could count the amount of times that I've exercised on my hands. But before that, I was relatively fit, exercising about five times a week, um, either in the gym or netball. But I am 100% not a runner. If you saw me running in the park, it would be because I either lost the dog or I was <laughs> late for something. Um, and I have no idea where to start. I just don't even know where it all begins. And there's so much to think about, you know, when you take running seriously and you want to start building it up with like pacing and breathing and terrain. And so I'm a complete newbie. Cool. I'm excited to see cool. if you be a proper runner. Well, we've got a lot to cover by the sounds of it. I mean, I know that you've done netball in the past and, you know, quite a lot of hit sessions in the gym. So you're, yeah. you're used to pushing your body, but in a different way then, I guess. Yes, yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, I think it's time that we share with you the first two weeks of what we've got in store and also can share it with you guys so you can follow along at home. So first week, three sessions with either one or two days rest in between. And they're all going to be the same to start with. So it's a five minute warm up, which is just a walk. And then the main set is 60 seconds of jogging followed by 90 seconds of walking. And you repeat that eight times through and then it's a five minute walk as a warm down. And the second week only increases slightly again, three sessions with the same one or two days rest. So you spread it out um, all the same again. So a five minute walk to warm up and then the main set, this time is going up to 90 seconds of jogging but the rest increases as well to two minutes of walk and you repeat that six times and then the warm down is again five minutes of walk all right so now you know what you're in for for the first two weeks yeah. how are you feeling and have you got any questions before we get going i mean i have lots of questions and oh, i'm gosh. not trying to avoid doing the actual running but <laughs> firstly am i walk how fast am i walking and running okay I mean, it's hard to like put an exact number on, but your walk is like you're going for a walk with Wilma. You're kind of, you are going somewhere. You're walking to the shops. So you're not just going for like a walk with a friend. So yeah. you're thinking, right, I want to get somewhere. Maybe like you're walking to work. Because okay. <laughs> I've, well, I've, I've seen you walk to work. So it's, it's brisk. And okay. then and then when it comes, to, so that's for your warm up, so the building to that. And then for the jog, I just want you to be jogging. Because if you're not used to jogging, it is literally so that you can still say a few words. So maybe you're chatting to Wilma or if you've got a friend to run with so that you can talk. So it's yeah. not, you're not finishing going, <gasps> because you finish and you've then got to go back to walking not stopping so we want it to be continuous okay. um, then the walk in those in between bits can be a bit slower if you need to just get your breath back right. so it's kind of conversational running and then walking that's still moving forwards but as a recovery walk right okay and then so then each session am I trying to get faster or I just keep the same pace no so at the moment because naturally we are it's only slight but we're progressing the distance so you don't want to try and change too many factors at once so we're not going to be changing the intensity we're just changing the the length of each effort and then overall a tiny bit more in total so we're just concentrating on that and then the the pace will come in later on so yeah. the first few weeks it's purely about just getting used to running and sort of finding your comfortable zone right okay and then if i 
you know, skip a day, um, <laughs> what happens there? Okay, well, at the moment it's three per week. So you've got like a little bit of leeway to still have. So if you skip one day, you could hopefully still fit all three in in the week. But if say it gets to Sunday and you haven't done it, then there is no harm in putting that one on the Monday, as long as you've still got a day off in between. And just don't panic, like maybe give me a call and see how you're doing or something. But I don't want you to sort of back them all up. So you're then doing your, all, like we're meeting two weeks after and you haven't started and you're gonna then try and put all six into one week. Don't, I don't want you doing no that. Cramming. So yeah, no, no, no like cram learning or anything like that. So try and always keep a day in between. And if you go off that model, you've still got a spare day each week to play with, so okay. to speak. Cool. And then I think the last bit is obviously we live in Bath and it's ridiculously hilly. Yeah. And I get really tight calves. So what, what do I do there? Okay, well, I know you've got some, some nice new shoes, which have got a bit more of a, a heel toe rise. So that should hopefully help a little bit. And yes, hills are the sort of bane of our lives around here, but you can use them to your advantage. So if you are starting off and you're like, you're on a really hilly route and like some of the really steep hills around here, it's okay to actually walk that, but walk it really hard on right. if it's on your run part. And then obviously on the recovery bit, you're gonna have to walk really slowly to make sure you've got enough recovery because the hills do naturally make you work harder. So I don't want you worrying about pace or anything like that. And then as for tight calves, just make sure you can start to get a little bit of a stretching routine and some rolling, but we'll talk more about that maybe in the next week but yeah just keep an eye on them and if they are getting uncomfortably tight or it's it's increasing then yeah ease off a little bit and make sure you've just got sort of plenty of stretches after and also it's really important you get that full five minute warm up before you start each time so we'll we'll keep an eye on that okay great and then lastly i guess is there any sort of running etiquette oh. i need to know as a complete newbie that's a funny one isn't it i like because i think because i've run all my life i have to actually have a think about that one it's not quite like cycling there's not as many things that you could do wrong so i wouldn't worry i think at the moment in covid times if you're running on any paths just remember to like shout if there's anyone up ahead because right. you know i know some walkers get oh <laughs> can get like worried if they suddenly hear a runner like up yeah. behind them so don't be afraid to just sort of maybe your breathing's heavy enough so people hear you yeah. or just be like sort of cough or like say i'm coming through but other than that i would say smile to other runners that you pass All right, now you've asked all your questions. I think there's no more procrastination. It's time for your first session. Are you ready? Okay, I think I'm ready. I think Wilma's ready. She's definitely ready. And you've got plenty of walking, so I think she'll be fine. <laughs> definitely, okay. We'll all start right. the timer. Good luck. Let's go. See you when you're yeah, back. Okay. See you, Wilma. All right, whilst Pippa is out on our run, we probably should have a look at kit. And as you can see, Pippa came prepared. She had the full set of running kit and you don't need to go and splash out on loads of new kit, but I would say investing in a decent pair of running shoes is essential. It will make such a difference. If you don't have the correct shoes, it could lead to blisters and even worse, some sort of injury. So make sure you've got something that's comfortable and offers you the amount of support that you need. And again, a good pair of socks will also help with that comfort side of things. Now, as for clothing, it doesn't need to be so specific comfort is key for getting you coming back to your next session but if you've got something that's sweat wicking that'll help to maintain you at your body at a nice temperature um, if you're obviously in really hot climates then you might need something that's a little bit more technical talking of technical you probably noticed Pippa has a nice polar watch. You don't need to go to the extremes of buying a sport specific watch. For this program, it's all based on time. So you just need something to basically be able to time yourself with. So whether it's a basic sports watch or it's even your phone with a timer, that's completely fine. If you are using your phone, you might want to have something to carry it in if you don't have a pocket because you want to have your hands free. And talking of that, headphones are another option. If you're motivated by music, then by all means use them, but try to find somewhere to sort of put it out of the way so it's not distracting you. And finally, water. I know a lot of people ask about water. Obviously, we're starting off pretty short on these runs. So unless you're somewhere really hot, I would say you probably don't need to carry water with you. If you do, try to find some way of carrying it so that you can still be relaxing your upper body and concentrate on form rather than having to hold something in your hand. How was it? <sighs> I, it was okay. Yeah, it was good. I mean, I am really unfit, so 
I'm definitely excited for that to change. Well, that's good. I mean, it would be it would kind of if it was really easy and you were like, oh, I'm super fit, I kind of defeat the object. But was it harder or easier than you expected? I think I think it was. It wasn't as hard as I expected because the walking really helped. But I definitely think at the end of the running, I was sort of at my capacity and I I needed those walks. So. Okay. I was very grateful for those, so thanks. Cool. <laughs> and whilst you're doing it, did it bring out any like hopes have you got for this whole programme or anything you're really worried about? I mean, I'm worried about my calves, but I'll mm. go home and do like a proper stretch session now. Um, and then, yeah, I guess I, I'm scared I'm going to fail in front of all these people. But um, I'm really That's I normal, hopeful isn't it? I think. that, yeah, that I will become a runner, that you will get me regularly running. Yeah. And hopefully... I'll learn, you know, to, to be using it as a stress reliever like so many people yeah. use it, whereas right now it's more stressful. So okay, well, we we'll nice. hopefully get rid of that stress side of things. Have you got any questions before you go off for your next sort of these two weeks? You've got another, what have you got, another five sessions before we touch yeah. base again? I, mean, I, I think I'm okay now, but I will probably be ringing you like oh. Please do, please do. <laughs> awesome. And Wilma, did you enjoy that? <laughs> She seemed to be pretty yeah. cool with it too. I think, I think definitely next time I'll go without her though because she, yeah, she was far more interested in sniffing and eating <laughs> the lead. Um, but as much as she's a beautiful camera model, yes. it's better to run without her. I think. Awesome. Well, we look forward to the update in two weeks' time. Thank you. A massive thanks to Pippa because I know it's really getting out of her comfort zone to be doing this and to be on camera so please give her plenty of encouragement and even better if you're in the same situation as Pippa then join in and follow the program and let us know how you're getting on you can do that in the comments section below so we will be back in two weeks time to find out how Pippa's got on and also give you an update of the next two weeks of the program so see you then if you've enjoyed it give us a like and remember to check out our social media channels and give those a follow too.